And I, honestly, I don't care to know. I don't care if he is the son of God or isn't. He's still a great man. He still does amazing things. Um, I think he's loving, kind, uh, compassionate, and just forgiving. Sin. I can't really answer that. Something you've done wrong in terms of your religion? I'm not really a religious person. You just float around until you find another vessel. On May 7, 2016, a truly extraordinary one-day, all-day conference on evidence for Christian faith is coming to northern New England, and you won't want to miss it. I dare you to show me any other worldview, any other worldview that does not lean on your works. Well, most of the morals in all religions are the same. So we're basically all following one thing. We just like to poke our noses in other people's business. I, my whole look on it is personal preference. I mean, we all have different beliefs, and there's no saying who, what's right and who's right. Why Jesus 2016 will not be an entertainment event to tickle your senses. It'll be a training event to challenge your mind with such you dynamic know, speakers as Dr. Question. Rabbi Zacharias, Lee Strobel, and Randy out. David so Newman. Join thousands of other Christian believers in learning how to make a convincing case for your Christian faith. There's a whole generation out there, you know, my generation, they don't get it yet. They don't understand. This isn't based on wishful thinking and, and, and legend and mythology. This is based on a solid foundation of historical truth. And I said, Along with the speakers, there'll be workshops, panels, exhibits, and music. This one-time event will leave you inspired, informed, and better equipped to stand strong in a secular age. Plan now to attend. Bring a friend. Invite a skeptic on May 7, 2016 at the Cross Insurance Center in Bangor, Maine. Tickets are just $15 per person. Visit whyjesus2016.org. I don't know. I don't know how it all ends, I guess. Teen Challenge changed my life. I'm not the same person. Well, I mean, I'm the same. But I'm totally different. I made some really stupid decisions in my life. Some really stupid decisions. I made a big mess of everything. I just want to be a mom again. I was ready to make a change. But I couldn't do it on my own. Teen Challenge is a drug and alcohol rehabilitation program. It's for people over 18 who struggle with an addiction. After living together for a year, we became like a family very close. I needed that. I heard a message of hope. I learned to see myself in all of life. In a totally different way. I got my life back. I was ready to change. It was really hard, but I was ready. Are you ready to get your life back? Thousands of people just like you, through God's saving grace, have found freedom from addiction. Teen Challenge is coming. There we go. It's uh, always good to get away. It's always nice to get home. Thank you so much uh, for the prayers and well wishes. We had fantastic weather. Uh, it was unbelievable. I, I don't think I've ever driven with my air conditioner on that far north. I mean, it was just up into Maine. It was 27, I think, just as we got into Portland, Maine on uh, Wednesday, sometime Wednesday. And uh, just a fantastic a, a, a spring they're having. One of my favorite things to do was driving through Pennsylvania, they're always a little bit ahead of what we are in watching the land and that kind of stuff, and that smell of liquid manure and the tractors going in the field, I mean, it was just awesome. I love it. I know you, think all, you all think I'm weird, but if you grow up on a dairy farm, as soon as you start to get a whiff of that, you're like, yeah, this is good. And uh, so God is good, and he does the scenery around us. We watched a couple of videos there. And we need to know, like, real soon, for those of you that are interested in going to see the Rabbi Zacharias and the Lee Strobel event down in Bangor, tickets are $15, and 
and we need to get them bought soon because they're selling fast, as you would expect. And so we don't have all of the details worked out as far as transportation because all of that's going to depend on, on who's coming and all of those things. Uh, we're kind of thinking uh, that accommodations will be at Beulah. We're going to utilize the hotel there, so that'll kind of help us out a bit on cost, and it'll kind of help us get partway back. If you travel with me, I mean, I'd just leave the event at 9 or 10 o'clock Saturday night, and I'd just drive back to Weymouth, and I'd be here Sunday morning. But I hear some of you don't like to travel like that. My wife doesn't like to travel like that sometimes. So we're not going to travel like that. We'll, we'll take the... Terry doesn't either. Uh, you have to have a passport, yes. You need to have a passport uh, for, uh, for crossing the border. So you, if you don't have a passport and you want to go, I th you still have time. You can, uh, you can expedite that and get that done through Halifax, and uh, that will be good. So I want to put a plug in for that. April 3rd, the other video we watched, uh, Teen Challenge is going to be here on April 3rd. And uh, you've, there's some posters up, and we've been promoting that a little bit. We're going to start to promote it really hard now as we get into uh, that season. And so if you, need, if you know somebody that needs to hear about the transforming power of Jesus' name, I, I can't think of any better place for them to be on April 3rd than right here. And you will be touched by the stories. But I want it to be more than just a, us all to walk out of here feeling feeling moved or something within our heart or heart gently stirred. I want lives to be changed. And so if you know of somebody that maybe is affected by addiction, has been affected by addiction, uh, knows somebody that is affected by addiction, this is the place they need to be April 3rd to hear the guys from Teen Challenge. And uh, we're just praying and expecting a great day on that Sunday. Easter's coming really fast. The crew has been working uh, so hard to get everything ready. You need to be inviting people to be here. Uh, and again, we just don't want this to be an event to put lots of people in the seats. We want lives changed. And so you all know somebody that needs Jesus. If you don't, you're hanging around the wrong people. Yeah. If all you're hanging around is people that know Jesus already, you need to make some friends with people that don't know Jesus because that's what we're put here on earth for. We're to be salt and light in this world. So hopefully you all know somebody that needs to know Jesus and you want to invite them here so they can hear again about uh, how Jesus can change lives. And we're going to be starting a brand new series next week about that. And if I don't mention what's on this piece of paper, I'll forget. And somebody will say, well, you had it in your hand. Why didn't you mention it? Easter tea. I'm not a tea drinker, but there might be coffee there. I know there was at the last event. Uh, proceeds go directly to the SMBA, uh, St. Mary's Bay Academy Cultural Trip to Montreal, Saturday, March 19th from 2 to 4 at the Weymouth Church of Christ Basement Hall. There's going to be a free will offering. And so we've promoted um, this trip for our teens that are going on that trip to Montreal, uh, some of the fundraising things that they've been doing. There's some of our teens that are involved in that, and we'll be going in that event. So March 19th, 2 to 4, Weymouth Church of Christ Basement Hall. I think that's all that, that needs to be said. Those of you that are involved in the Easter presentation, you know where you need to be, when you need to be there. And I just want to say thank you for your level of commitment. If you look around, there's a few of us that normally don't have facial hair that are starting to grow some facial hair uh, for that. It's been 20 years since I grew a beard. I grew a beard the summer before I got married because my wife said, if you're going to do it, this is the time to do it because you never get to do it again. <laughs> She was wrong. <laughs> Only the one thing I've noticed is uh, I did have a little bit of red in my beard when I grew it in 20 years ago. That red has turned to white. I just don't understand how that has all happened. But we're excited for it. And uh, thank you so much for each of you that have taken part, those that are doing the sound and the tech stuff. Uh, we just appreciate so much about that. Um, before we get started, let's pray. Father God, thank you that we are able to be in this place today. And Father, we want lives to be changed. We, want, we know your Holy Spirit is going to speak. Uh, that's a given. That happens any time that your people gather. What we want, though, is we want your Holy Spirit to be heard. And so, Father, I pray that we would be receptive to that. So that as we leave from this place, that people that need to be encouraged would be encouraged. People that need to find you would find you, Father. People that need to uh, hear a, a word of wisdom or a word of guidance, Father, that they would hear that. It might not happen up front. God, it may be in the conversations that we are having beforehand or afterhand or downstairs in our agape meal, Father. And we want this day to be all about you and nothing else. 
Lord, in a little while, Alicia's going to come and share, and we thank you for her level of commitment for going to the Czech Republic, and we're excited with her. And I just pray that you would raise up more people that would be willing to, to say no to some things that might be pretty good here in this world and in this life and in this country even, to say yes to the great thing that you have in store for them. And so we just pray for a great day today, and we ask all of these things in your name. Amen. Ushers, if you want to come this morning, we're going to receive the tithe and offerings. And the worship team, I guess, is coming too. They took your stairs away, guys. As we pray for the offering this morning, Hallett would like us to pray for him. Hallett Sabin is having some difficulty breathing, and I'm sure most of you are aware of this, uh, but Jared Mitchell uh, passed away uh, the course of this week, and so we need to remember the Mitchell family. And I know they're way out in Colorado, but they've been sensing and feeling the prayers of their uh, community here in Weymouth, and so let's pray for the Mitchell family too. God, uh, you are in the midst of whatever it is that's happening and going on, and we left the Mitchell family up to you this morning. And Father, if, if we've never walked down the road of losing a child before, uh, Lord, we have no idea what they're dealing with and going through. But we thank you that after a very long battle with cancer, that he finished his fight on Wednesday morning, sorry, Thursday morning. Lord, and he certainly fought the good fight, and now he's home with you. What a wonderful hope we have when we serve you and when we follow you. And so we lift the Mitchells up to you this morning. God, we also pray for Hallett this morning. Pray that you would touch the breathing issue that he's having. Pray that your healing hand would be upon him this day and he would feel the touch of the master's hand even as we gather here this morning. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people, Father, as we receive the tithes and offerings this morning. They are yours. Everything we have is yours. And so we give back to you according to how you've given to us. And we ask all of these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. everyone. It is good to have our pastoral family back. Um, I know Tracy and Natalie did an awesome job while you're away and I do hope that you had fun and relaxation and rest but we are very glad to have you back. Um, why don't you stand with me we're going to sing this chorus through a couple times and uh, then we're going to shake a hand and then encourage someone this morning. I've got a river of life flowing out of me Makes the lane to walk and the blind to see Opens prison doors and the captives free I've got a river of life flowing out of me Spring up, oh well, gush, gush, and in my soul Spring up, oh well They play that, just shake someone's hand and make everyone feel welcome.
to our next hymn at the cross and it's nearing Easter so um, these are just some songs that remind us of uh, the season that we're celebrating we just sang this morning about the cross and whether we realize it or not and I think probably in this group we do everything that we do in the name of Christ is surrounded by the cross and what God accomplished at the cross it's not in our own strength it's not in our own ability and of course we could we could spend days talking about uh, the importance of blood being shed and how much that would mean for the Jews that were there when Jesus was put on the cross. And of course, we're in this Lent season now. And probably many of you have been thinking about that. And your, your daily uh, time with God has been focused around that. But we must never get away from the cross. And so we're going to enter into this time of communion and the Lord's Supper. Something, by the way, that God commanded us to do. It wasn't just optional. It wasn't just if you feel like it. 
Because in his words, it was when you do. The, the apostles just assumed that, that we would just keep doing this. Not if you do, when you do. And some guidance exists throughout God's word. I want to read a passage of scripture for us this morning from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, picking it up in verse 17. In the following directives, I have no praise for you. By the way, if anybody starts off a letter to that to the church, it's usually not a good letter, is it? I have no praise for you, for your meetings do more harm than good. God forbid that our meetings would do more harm than good, right? In the first place, I hear that when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. And to the same extent, I believe it. No doubt there have been, there ha, there have, have to be differences among you to show which of you have God's approval. When you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anybody else. One remains hungry, another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you for this? Certainly not. For I received from the Lord what I already passed on to you. In other words, I already told you you needed to be doing this and you're not listening. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we judged ourselves, we would not come under judgment. When we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined, so that we will not be condemned with the world. So then, my brothers, when you come together, eat, wait for each other. If anyone is hungry, he should eat at home, so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further directions. Paul reminds us there that this ought to be a time not just of walking through some ritual that we have just do out of habit, but rather we're to examine ourselves and to see how we're doing in light of God, not in light of whoever is sitting beside us judging us, but in light of God. And so we're going to take a few moments this morning to examine ourselves. Not because it's my idea, because God says it's a good thing to do. And so if we would just pause for a few moments and spend these next few moments that we have examining ourselves in light of what God has done for us. And then I'll pray and then our communion stewards will come up and we'll distribute the elements. But let's just pause for these few moments and ask the Holy Spirit to examine our lives. Father God, in the quietness of this moment, we ask that your Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts. And Father, may it be as if nobody else is in this room other than us and you. And Father, may we examine ourselves in light of what you've called us to do, not in light of what we think we should be doing or in light of what somebody else has told us we should be doing and how we should be living. 
but how you've called us to live. And Father, as we remember the incredible sacrifice this morning, I pray that this would just be a celebration of how we are already living our life. And we ask you to challenge us to go deeper in our relationship with you. And all of this we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'd ask if our communion stewards would come forward this morning. As has been the custom, I would ask if you would refrain from eating the elements until, um, and taking the elements until all have received and we'll all take together. the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the body, took the bread, sorry, and as they met at a table that may have looked a little bit like this with his disciples, and he said, this bread represents my body, which will be broken. We must never forget that salvation came at an incredible cost. Christ gave everything he had. His body was broken. And so as we take of this this morning, let us remember that this represents Christ's body, which was broken for us, so that we can not only have eternal life, but can also have the life that God has called us to live on this earth. Let us take together this morning.
Jesus and his disciples were celebrating Passover, of course, before he was crucified on the cross. And Passover tradition uh, called them to remember the night that the angel of death passed over the Jewish people, the Israelites, as they were getting ready to leave bondage so that the firstborn would not be killed. And so they would have to put blood over the, the doorposts. But they couldn't just choose the blood of anything or any animal. It had to be their best. They had to sacrifice their best. And for many of you, you understand this. I think this is something that is so well, so much better understood in rural living. Because we usually like to try to preserve our best animal. We like... If growing up on a dairy farm, we didn't want to sacrifice our best cow. If the freezer was empty, we needed wanted to get rid of the worst cow. For those of you that are mink ranchers, you don't want to sacrifice your best mink. You want to keep that. But God said that it could not happen unless the best was sacrificed. And so the best was sacrificed thousands of years before Jesus would come. And Jesus showed up as God's best And said, my best is going to have to be sacrificed so that we can be forgiven and not have to live in bondage. If you're here this morning and you're not living in bondage, it's because God allowed his best to be sacrificed. If you're here this morning and you are living in bondage, you haven't accepted the gift that God has for you. That is not his plan. He gave his best for that. And that best meant that blood would have to be shed. And Jesus' blood was shed for each one of us. And we do this to remember that blood that was shed from God's best, his son, Jesus Christ. Let us take together this morning remembering that. Father, as we remember the sacrifice that was paid for each one of us, I pray that we would be encouraged like we never have before. That God, you don't want our leftovers, you want our best. And so God, however that lands for each one of us, whatever that means for each one of us, I pray that we would realize that we will never experience the life that you have called us to live unless we're willing to sacrifice our best. And that's hard And it's messy, Father, but it's so worth it because of the sacrifice that you paid for us. Thank you for this moment, these moments that we've had to focus on what truly matters, the cross of Jesus Christ and the fact that he wants to transform lives. And I pray that we would leave in this place in a few moments later today with a renewed vision for what you would want for us, and we ask this in your name. Amen. I believe the trio is coming to sing a song. This is a little bit different to try and uh, sing with them not standing right here by me, but we're going to... Um, We're just going to do a couple verses of this song, and when we get to the end of it, we're going to pop the chorus up on the screen, and we want you to join in and help us sing this. It's just a beautiful um, song about Easter and praising the Lord. Praise is rising, eyes are turned. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. 
And in your presence all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. do this last uh, song before our speaker comes, before our pastor comes again. There is a Redeemer. There is a Redeemer.
couple of weeks and I get it all out of sync and just about missed my cue while I got, jumped my cue getting up here. Uh, kids are dismissed to go down to the lower level for Kids Church this morning. I just want to say, I, I have no idea who's, who's doing this, uh, but I need to say good morning to it, whoever's watching on Periscope, because I was looking over while I was away at some of our Periscope stats, and that was kind of a, a last-minute thing that we decided to do when Arnold and Jill were away, and we have between 55 and 60 people that are tuning in on Sundays uh, to watch us on Periscope. you're watching on Periscope this morning, it's good to have you with us this morning, and I know some of you podcast, and I have no idea who's listening to the podcasts on, online. We don't, that information doesn't get fed back, but it's just pretty amazing what we can do with, uh, with technology. In your bulletins, uh, there was a note there that there was a card that you could sign that we were going to send off to the Mitchell family. Don't go looking for the card because the card doesn't exist. There was a bit of a miscommunication in getting the card here this morning, so we're going to have that here for next Sunday, and we'll get that signed and sent off to them and uh, wishing them our deepest thoughts and prayers uh, in their time of loss. About 20 years ago, I know I'm not going to tell some long story, but I needed to tell this after having a conversation this morning. I had the opportunity, I've had the opportunity to work and to come alongside a lot of great people over my very short time in ministry. And probably nobody affected who I was starting out in ministry more than what, I'm not going to get through this without tearing up Jack and Pauline Fancy. And you say, what does that got to do with anything this morning? This young lady that's coming up here this morning is Jack and Pauline's granddaughter. And Jack and I would sit in his office at St. John First. One thing I love, he caught me off guard for a little while with your grandfather. Whenever you talked to him on the phone, he never said goodbye. It's just like the conversation was over and the <laughs> thing went on the hook. I said to Pauline one Sunday, does he ever say goodbye to you? No, never, he said, she said. Jack was a great man of God and nobody I ever met loved lost people as much as what Jack did. Jack didn't have a university degree. He entered ministry late, and he was just so good at it, they said, we got to ordain this guy and get him into ministry. I think he was in his mid-40s. And he's had an amazing impact on this district and on so many people's lives and on, on other pastors' lives and his kids and family. And Alicia is another example of how awesome that is. She's got one of her cousins with her this morning, and uh, his girlfriend is with us. And we're so glad to have you with us this morning, Alicia. And I feel like I kind of know you. We just met for the first time. But we're glad you're here, glad to hear about your passion for the Czech Republic, and uh, we're just so excited to hear from you. Would you like Thank to you. use that? Do you want that brought up? Would that help you out? Over this is that? perfect. Yeah, Are this is sure? good. I'll just... Awesome. Lord bless you, Thank Alicia, you. this morning as you share. Thank you so much. Good morning, church family. How's everyone? Are you awake? I hope so. Uh, it's so good and such a privilege to be here with you this morning to share with you some of the things that God is doing in the Czech Republic. Now, I've been there for two years. I recently got back, I guess in August, and I spent two years serving there with Global Partners as a, G, a GoNet missionary, which is like a short-term missionary project. So I went over, kind of not really knowing what God was going to do, but knowing that God was leading me to go. And so I went. And while I was there, I worked for a nonprofit organization called MIAC. Now, MIAC is Czech for Lighthouse. And that is exactly what our community center is. It's a lighthouse in the community for, for shining the light of Christ in a very dark place. And that's what we do. A big part of what I get to do in the, in the community is to teach English. Because a lot of people are really interested in learning English for business purposes and different things. But it's become a, an incredible segue into really building deep relationships with people. Like I never expected. And if you'd asked me five years ago even, if I would be a teacher, I would have said, no way. Like, I'm not doing that. And then God led me across the, the world to teach English. And you know what? I love it. It's so good. When I first landed in the Czech Republic, one of the things that I noticed the most was how spiritually dark 
the culture is, how oppressive it is, and just how cold people are. I'm sure that if you've heard anything about Eastern Europe, it's that people are very cold, and they don't really like to talk, and they're very, they like to keep people at a distance, which most of that is true. Initially, you know, a lot of people are very standoffish, but when God is in it, and when God is working, miracles happen, and people open up, but sometimes that takes years of really getting to know people, and so working at Mayak and teaching English, I mean, we teach young children all the way on up through, I have some 70 year old women in my class and they're the most fun, like they're amazing. But we teach people of all ages, if you wanna come to Mayak, you come. And it's amazing ministry that we do there. Twice a week we have conversation club, which is also really cool. And then about three years ago, we were really wanting to do some more with reading the Bible with people, but we weren't sure how to go about it. So we just decided, you know what, we're gonna do it. We're gonna offer an opportunity for people to read the Bible with us. And so after conversation club, once a week, we have a Bible group and we have about 12 people and people come because they are interested in reading the word of God. Most of them are not believers. They're very, you know, against faith of any kind they still come because they're curious. It's actually known that the Czech Republic is one of the most atheistic countries in the entire world. Just people live with unbelief and for them that's their life and they don't really care to talk about religion or God. For them that's that's the way of life and that's okay. And so sometimes it's really challenging um, in a lot of ways. But like I said before, when God is in it, he brings opportunities to share hope and love and truth to people um, when I least expect it. So this morning, I want to share with you a short um, video presentation of a, a lot of the people that have become good friends of mine, people that I get to hang out with and minister to and love on. And I just want you to see their faces and get a better glimpse and picture of who these people are. So... It's about three minutes long, so I hope you enjoy. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my trouble, see you all. You are the peace in my trouble, see. 
people that God has put in my life to to love and to cherish. So those are some of my best friends in the Czech Republic. Um, about a year ago, about a year and a half, I guess, my team of missionaries and I, we were sitting together, and we were just really craving and desiring to see God move in amongst the people. And so we, as we were brainstorming, deciding, you know, we need to pray. Like, we need to pray for these people that they will see and know the truth of Jesus. And so we sat down for like an hour or so and came up with four things that I want to share with you this morning. So if you have a piece of paper and pen, you can write them down. I just want to call on you, church family, to pray with me for these things um, that are really obstacles in the culture that we live in. The first thing is that of past ministry relationships. Mayak has been in existence for about 15 years, so you can imagine how many people we've seen come in and out of our doors. You know, people that we've been able to, to spend time with and share the gospel with. A lot of those people no longer come for whatever reason. But we value and realize how important it is for us to be able to reach people in the community, to go out and just share Christ with people. And about eight years ago, I spent six months in Brno, in the Czech Republic, working at Mayak and teaching, and it was an internship. So I experienced a lot during that time, but one of the most meaningful things for me was the relationship that I built between two girls Ivana and Martina, their sisters. And at that time, they were coming to Mayak every, almost every day. They were always there because they were hearing the gospel and they were desiring that relationship with God. And so they would come all the time and they would just listen and they would ask questions. They were hungry for truth. And going back two years ago, I found out that Martina and Ivana no longer go to Mayak. Um, some things had happened amongst some of the, the people at Mayak, and it really put a bad taste in these two girls' mouths. Like, they just, all of a sudden, they saw some behavior of Christians that they didn't like, and they, they said, we're done. Like, we can't do this. This isn't right. And so for years, they just, they left Mayak. They had this like strong distaste towards the church for a while. And it was really sad to me to know that that they no longer wanted anything to do with the church because of some things that they'd experienced, which unfortunately those things happen. And people aren't perfect, but God is. And so I was praying for this opportunity. Okay, God, here I am back in the Czech Republic Please give me an opportunity to share and to love on these girls, to, to have this relationship where I can encourage them and, and speak to them about healing from God. And so over the last two years, God has given me many opportunities to just come back into the lives of these girls and to share love with them and to encourage them. And before I left, um, one of them said, you know what, I, I miss church. I miss God, and I do desire that. So there is that beginning stages of healing, I believe, and just like, okay, this is still interesting to me. Like, I want to know more about God. So please pray for people like Martina and Ivana, because there are several, many of them around. Pray that God will continue to move in their lives and speak to them. So please pray with me for past ministry relationships that we've had with people who've come to Mayak and, and that we would just be able to share the gospel um, effectively with these people. The second thing I want to share with you this morning is that of inherited atheism and pride. Like I mentioned it before, um, there's this belief that there is no God. And... 
a lot of people are apathetic. Like, it is how it is, and that's it. End of discussion. Right there. But along with this comes low self-esteem. And I'd heard this before, but I didn't really know it to be true until specifically I was hanging out with one of my friends at Mayak, and he would say things to me over and over like, Alicia, my, my life is worthless. Like those words came out of his mouth. I have no worth or value. I have no really no reason to live. Because at that point in his life, he wasn't very high up on the totem pole, so to speak. Like his job, he was trying to find a job, and he was just really struggling in a lot of ways. And he doesn't believe in God. And in his mind, he has no value unless he has a good job, unless he makes a lot of money. And so for him, life has very low worth. How sad is that? How sad and hopeless to live thinking there's no point, there's no purpose. But it's not just my friend Lukash that believes this way. It's many other people that have nothing to put their hope in. So please, friends, I ask you to pray for Lukash and for other people in the Czech Republic who have this same mindset. Like, there is no God. My life is worthless. Please pray with me for people like this. The third thing that I want to share with you is historical bondage. Now, the history of the not only the Czech Republic, but all the surrounding countries is very dark. It's a very dark place to go. Um, specifically, Catholicism in the history of the church, it can be a very sore subject with people. Like they just brings back, you know, bad memories or bad things. And communism, of course, played a huge effect and role on how people think and how they function and their thought process. Um, so if people go to church, which most people don't, but if they do, they go to the Catholic church or they believe in many spiritual pathways to God, right? So it was about a year ago that these three guys came walking into our conversation club and they seemed really cool. So myself and a few other missionary friends, we just, we were talking to them, like getting to know them and we were just having a really good conversation. Like it was like, it seemed endless. Like there was lots to talk about and it came up in conversation um, that they kind of believe a little bit of everything and we share with them, you know, we believe in the Bible, we believe in Jesus and that he's a savior of the world. Basically, it was just all out there. And they said, yo, that's really interesting. Can we read the Bible with you guys? And we're like, yes, like, of course. So for a semester, we would meet with these three guys. And we would spend from like 6 p.m. to midnight once a week just reading the Bible and talking about God and talking about religion and all these things. And it became very clear and evident that they believe in reincarnation, they believed that Jesus was a good guy, but that was it for them. And they just, whatever felt good to them is what they adapted as their belief system. And they even were saying things like, you know, we believe in, in fairies that live in the forest and hobbits. And, you know, these things come out of their mouth. And my instinct, honestly, was to laugh. Like, that's crazy. But that's what they believe. That's truth for them. It's not funny. It's they're lost. And they're confused. And so we've been reading the Bible with them. And I would love and ask for you to pray for people like Tomas, Tomas, and Andra. That they will know and seek the truth. The truth. And that they will know it in their hearts and believe it. Um, because they're confused, and they would even say that, like, 
we don't really know what to believe sometimes. So please pray for these three guys as well. The last thing that I want to share with you to pray with me for is the stronghold of addictions. Um, Alcoholism and pride are really huge addictions in the culture. Like when you're young, a little, just a little thing, you probably will have experienced your first sip of alcohol. Like it's just, it is what it is for them. And they probably wouldn't see it as an addiction, but they're, people are drinking all the time. Like it is a problem. It is an addiction. And along with this comes a lot of dysfunction in families, as you can imagine. And seeing and knowing this, makes me so grateful for my inheritance like my grandparents who i grew up hearing the truth from them i grew up reading the bible and knowing what i believe but for many almost all czechs they don't have that at all like their parents don't believe their grandparents don't believe so they don't believe and they're just lost And so there's a lot of dysfunction in families. We found this to be true. So every summer, we have summer camp, and it's about a week long. And one of my good friends was there. She comes to Conversation Club every week, and she was there this year. And there was one day during camp that I saw my friend Anna sitting off by herself, which honestly wasn't that abnormal because she's way more introverted and she likes to keep to herself, but I just felt led by the Holy Spirit to go and sit with her, just chat with her, so I did, and she just started talking to me, and pouring out all these things um, from her life, just sharing about past things. She grew up going to the Catholic Church, and her father and mother were, were believers, but her father was verbally abusive to her, like, most of her life growing up, he would hatefully spew things at her, like, you are stupid, Anna, because you don't believe God. You are dumb. Like, how can you not believe? Can you imagine years and years of hearing these kinds of hateful lies? She started to believe it, and she associated the Heavenly Father with her earthly father, right? And so, as I sat there listening to her, um, I, afterwards I grabbed my friend who's a believer and I said, hey, we need to pray for Anna because she's battling, she's struggling. She heard the gospel, she's heard the gospel many times, but I knew that, that there was a battle going on spiritually inside of her. And about a month after I returned back to North America, I got a letter in the mail from Anna um, and I want to read a part of it to you. Hear the words that Anna wrote. After camp, things inside of my head were seriously driving me insane, and I didn't know what to do. I just couldn't calm down. I'd write a few paragraphs of my thoughts, and still I was getting nowhere. But I knew that I was missing something in my life. And then one day, I was reading, and someone said in the book that believing in God is a personal thing for each person. And then I felt what was being said in this book, and then something inside of me broke. I asked God to come, and he did. And he hasn't left since then. I have never felt so happy before. It feels like my scars are healing after a long, long time. And I don't feel alone anymore. And I feel that he loves me. And that is the best feeling ever. And I feel like I finally got something right in my life. I don't feel the emptiness that I used to feel. I just feel so much love inside of me. And I I can even love people better now than I did before. It feels great. I'm sure you know what I mean. My life got a new dimension. It's no longer... I got to get through another day. It's like, yeah, I wonder what this one is going to bring. I love it, and I love him. 
He is my hope. He is truth and love. And I'm not alone in it. Praise God for how he works. But let me tell you, friends, Anna is struggling. For about a month after I got this letter, we would talk on the phone about every week or so. We were just reading the Bible. I was like, hey, Anna, you want to read the Bible with me? She was like, yeah, sure. Like, I'm interested. And so we were talking and discussing issues and, and life. And about a month after kind of discipling her, she, she wrote me and she's like, Alicia, I can't do this anymore. The Bible is so confusing. Like, I don't understand a lot of it because she grew up, she's never read it before. And so for her, it was really confusing. She's like, I can't do it. So I said, okay, I respect that. But inside, I was really sad. Like, why? And so I continued to pray and called on people to pray. I know that lots of people have been praying for Anna. And then about a month and a half ago now, I got another message from Anna saying, you know, I've been reading some stuff. I still have a lot of questions and I'm confused, but I think I want to read the Bible with you, uh, Bible again. And so just a couple weeks ago, she wrote me another letter of the journey that she's on and how she's experiencing God in her life and how she's just sensing and feeling him moving. It's a journey that she's on, but God is working. Can't deny that. He's working and changing and transforming. So I give thanks to God, but I ask that you pray for Anna. Pray that she will read the word, she will know the truth, and that she will just have the peace of God living inside of her. So as I share these things with you this morning, friends, um, I just want to invite you two ways that you can be a part of this ministry. And as I was kind of praying, you know, God, my two years were coming to an end. I wasn't sure what I was going to do next. And I was praying, and God just gave me this peace, like, and this word, Alicia, I'm not finished with you in the Czech Republic, so you have to go back. And I had this peace from God, and he said, okay, let's do it. God, let's do it. And so I'm excited to say that I get to go back and serve God in the Czech Republic as a career missionary. And I couldn't be more excited to go back. So two ways that you can be a part of this is through prayer. We know that prayer works, and God hears us. And it's important that we pray for each other. So... I have a table in the Welcome Center, and on the table I have, you'll see, pictures scattered all over the table, and they are there for you to take. And on the pictures are some of the people that I shared this morning, and I would ask that you would take one or more and just pray. Put those pictures in a place where you are reminded to pray specifically for those people, okay? And the second thing with, with praying is that I have a sign-up list, and every month I send out updates to let you know what's going on and how you can be praying more specifically. So I would love it if you would sign up for that so that I know that you are on board and praying in that way. So if you would take a minute and do that, that would be amazing. And the second thing here that I want to share with you this morning is through financial giving. So I've created this map of the Czech Republic, and on a lot of these pieces is an amount. So $10, $20, $50, 75 or 100 I mean, you can give whatever. But this is just an example. So what each puzzle piece represents is, for example, $20 a month for my term, which is three years, if someone wanted to commit to do that, I would love to share with you how you can do it. But once all these pieces are gone, then I'll be fully funded and ready to go. At this point, I'm at 51%. It's all down here. <laughs> and my goal is to get back by July because we have a summer camp and I'd really like to be a part of it. So, but God knows all of that. And so in his, you know, timing. But if you would like to be a part through prayer, 
through financial giving. I'm going to be out there, and I would love to talk to you, chat with you. Um, maybe you have questions, whatever it is, come over and chat with me. But I want to leave you before I finish this morning with some verses in Romans chapter 10. These are for all of us to hear. You know, whether you're serving overseas or here in Nova Scotia, we all have the same commission, right? To, to preach the word of God. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of, who, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Thank you, church family. God bless. Stay right there, Alicia. We're going to pray for you before you go. Alicia, I'm going to do something. I've never done this before. Well, in public anyways. How old are you? 30. 30. What passion. For somebody so young. I just loved it. I mean, my heart was just about coming out of my chest. Thank you for going. Thank you for sharing your heart here. And uh, I hope you go and check out the display out there. And if we don't go, if we don't send, if we don't do all of that, who's going to do it? There's people that are lost and will spend an eternity in hell. If we don't do what God has called us to do, I have no idea why God chose to do it the way that he did it. Because he could have done it at the snap of his hands, but he's chosen us, he's chosen people like Alicia and given them hearts for people that are far from God. And so we want to pray for you, Alicia. And uh, then we're going to let you get out of here and get back there before everybody comes. But uh, I didn't want you out of here before, before we pray for you. So can we pray for a church? And uh, as a reminder that we need to keep praying for her even after she leaves from here. So let's pray. Father God, thank you for Alicia and for her heart of passion for people that are far from you. And God, I just pray that uh, as she has asked us to pray for some of these people's lives, back in the Czech Republic, that, Lord, that we would be conscious and aware and obedient to do that, Father. And we pray that as she uh, does all the work that uh, uh, needs to be done in the next few months and has, she has this goal to be back to her in July, and, uh, Lord, I just pray that you would work all of that out for your honor and for your glory. And, God, you need some people to be generous. It's all yours anyways, Father. And, and you have so blessed us here in this part of the world. And so, God, I pray that, that people would s step up and would be generous with their resources to see this happen. Because there will be, it's not just something we say, there will be people in heaven because of the sacrifice that is paid for people to go. And so I pray for your blessing on Alicia's life. And thank you for her willingness to step up and go when there could have been so many other things that she would have been able to do that would have been, well, it would have been good enough, but it wouldn't be the great thing. And so we pray that you would encourage her heart today. God, I pray that you would be with her parents. So tough, God. Uh, Lord, uh, when, our, when our loved ones are serving in faraway places, and Lord, I thank you for the home that she was brought up in. And, and even though they are pastors in a ministry and they get all of that, uh, it, it's still difficult. And so I, I just pray that you would encourage uh, their hearts today. And thank you for uh, the way that they have uh, served so well in ministry, but not just in the public, in the private, in their, in their own lives too. And so we pray a blessing on the Robertson family. Uh, this day. God, as we go from this place, give us a great day because you're going to be with us. And uh, we're going to gather downstairs for those of us that are able to stay for uh, share a meal or a agape meal, Father, and uh, Lord, with one another and be able to catch up and, and share. And Alicia will be able to share around the table too. And we just pray a blessing on the food. We pray a blessing on the fellowship. And God, just, we just want this to be all about you and not about us. And we ask all of this in your name. Amen. I'm going to let you go so you can get back out to the lobby.
uh, for the folks. I just want to remind everybody that starting next week, we have a brand new series starting called Risen. The best time to invite somebody to church is, is around Easter because people are thinking of church things for the most part and what a great place to be on the start of a series. Something brand new that we're going to be doing, it's got some pretty good feedback on Facebook. A lot of you use the Version app on your phones for reading the Bible. Uh, we have a brand new group set up. Uh, if, you just, if you just search through your Version app, Havelock Wesleyan Church, and we're going to have some notes up there and it's something that we're going to start doing. One of the podcasts, I listen to hours of podcasts when I'm away, and one of them was I Should Preach Longer. That was the title of it. My kid said, no, shut that off fast. <laughs> but what he was trying to say and what he was trying to convey is to lengthen the message that they should start on Thursday and end on Wednesday. And one of the ways we can do that is through version and get you thinking about uh, a couple of days beforehand what's going to be taught on Sunday and then be talking about it afterwards. And so we're going to be able to do that. If you have no idea what version is, that's fine too. But I know many of you use it and it's on your phones already. So just search up uh, Havelock Wesleyan Church and you'll find it there and we'll track along. We're glad you're here with us this morning. Don't be on a hurry on the way out. Uh, be sure to stop by Alicia's table. And if you can hang around for a potluck, there's lots of great food down there. I am so glad that we eat in the lower level because it would be so hard to sit up here and worship with the smell of the food that is going on down there. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.